Hello and welcome to part six of U.S. History Online. Today we will continue our look at Standard 7.6 by analyzing some of the key figures in the civil rights movement in America. After the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. turned his efforts to registering African American voters in the South. In 1965, he led a march in Selma, Alabama to increase the percentage of African American voters in the state. Again, King was arrested. Again, the marchers faced attacks by the police. Tear gas, cattle prods, and billy clubs fell on the peaceful protesters. President Johnson ordered the National Guard to protect the demonstrators from attack, and King was able to complete the long march from Selma to the state capital of Montgomery. The action in Selma led to the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. However, the violence in Birmingham and Selma, police brutality, resistance to civil rights, and decades of racism were reaching a boiling point. By the mid-1960s, urban uprisings and riots were taking place in more than 150 American cities. People were frustrated, angry, and felt helpless. African Americans had been victimized by poor education, the unavailability of quality employment, slum conditions, and police brutality. Then, early in the morning of April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was shot and killed by James Earl Ray while leaving his hotel room in Memphis, Tennessee. The assassination of Dr. King touched off a wave of violence in 125 more urban centers. At the behest of President Johnson, the Kerner Commission was created to examine the causes behind the rioting. After a six-month study, the committee declared that the source of unrest was white racism. Despite legislative gains, America was moving towards two distinct societies divided along racial lines. The Kerner Commission recommended a wide array of social spending programs, including housing programs, job training, and welfare. These became the cornerstone of Lyndon Johnson's Great Society program. The anger and frustration felt by many African Americans was also felt by Malcolm Little, better known as Malcolm X. When Malcolm Little was growing up in Lansing, Michigan, he developed a mistrust for white Americans. Ku Klux Klan terrorists burned his house, and his father was later murdered, an act young Malcolm attributed to local whites. After moving to Harlem, Malcolm turned to crime. Soon he was arrested and sent to jail. The prison experience was eye-opening for the young man, and he soon made some decisions that altered the course of his life. He began to read and educate himself. Influenced by other inmates, he converted to Islam. Upon his release, he was a changed man with a new identity. Believing his true lineage to be lost when his ancestors were forced into slavery, he took the last name of a variable, X. Malcolm X was heavily influenced by the beliefs of Wallace Fard. Fard had founded the Nation of Islam in the 1930s. Fard believed that Christianity was the white man's religion and that it was forced on African Americans during the slave experience. Islam, according to Fard, was closer to African roots and identity. Fard mixed the religious tenets of Islam with the concepts of black pride and black nationalism. The followers of Fard became known as Black Muslims. They preached adherence to a strict moral code and reliance on other African Americans. Integration was not a goal. Rather, the Nation of Islam wanted Blacks to set up their own schools, churches, and support networks. Malcolm X soon became a leading spokesperson for the Black Muslims. While Martin Luther King preached his gospel of peaceful change and integration in the late 1950s and early 1960s, Malcolm X delivered a different message. Whites were not to be trusted. He called on African Americans to be proud of their heritage and to set up strong communities without the help of white Americans. To Malcolm X, African Americans needed to rely on themselves to provide solutions to their own problems. Malcolm X rejected the concept of nonviolent resistance. He believed that violence was not the only answer, but violence was justified in self-defense. Blacks should achieve what was rightfully theirs by any means necessary. In 1963, 
he split with the Nation of Islam. Later, in 1964, he showed signs of softening his stand on violence and even met with Martin Luther King Jr. to exchange remarks. What direction he might have ultimately taken is lost to a history that can never be written. As Malcolm X led a mass rally in Harlem on February 21, 1965, rival black Muslims gunned him down, killing him. Although his life was ended, the ideas he preached lived on in the Black Power Movement.